Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are one day away from the official release of Naruto Cross Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections. And uh, pretty much everything's been leaked now. A lot of people have gotten the game early, and they've uh, uploaded pretty much everything there is to upload. And uh, so I figured I'd round things out one more time about this game and uh, give a decent preview as much as I can uh, towards the qualities or perhaps lack thereof of said game. Um, we've finally seen all the modes, everything that's in it. Uh, we've also heard what's been promised, so this is what to look forward to, what to have, and what to debate. Now, um, this game, the main feature is the special story. Everyone's very quick to spoil it. I've avoided actually spoiling it for myself. That's the one feature that I want to be unique to myself. It does look like uh, they're going to include some bosses in there from, like, new bosses from the main roster. Not just the new uh, Naruto against Sasuke one that's all over the internet. But uh, a few more bosses from the main roster in there. So that should be interesting. Hopefully there's a secret boss or two uh, that'll really amp things up. And, uh, and that's all I got really for the special story mode. It is pretty short from what I understand, which I like. I think it's a good thing because it means there's less padding. You know, the less time I have to run around playing hide and seek with Kono Hanra Maru, the better. So, um, <laughs> now as far as the history mode goes, this mode has gotten the most flack so far. Uh, truth is, as a mode, uh, it can be disappointing depending on your expectations. Now, of course, other Ultimate Ninja games have had history modes before. And uh, if you've played those games, you you know what to expect here. It's a lot of recycled material. Uh, the story is told through, um, what you might call it, slideshows. Some of which are voiced, some of which aren't. Um, it goes through the key fights in the series, and they did bring back a few of the boss battles, select boss battles from each game. Not as many as people thought, not as many as the game kind of hyped itself to be. Kept promising, you know, getting to relive the full story and then showing a whole bunch of boss footage. And it did give people the idea, myself included, that we might get all the boss battles here. And we didn't get probably half the boss battles, but we got some of the big ones. And uh, any battles that are important that they didn't bring the boss fights over, they did give us versus mode fights for. Some Some of these are for actually good reasons. Um, a lot of people complain about the lack of the, the final battles from Storm 3, which were against uh, Toby... And Madara, uh, the reason those boss fights didn't get used is because they're not canon. At the time Storm 3 came out, they didn't know, story-wise, what they were going to do. So they made a conclusion to that story, which, uh, of course, they had to retcon, because that's not how the story ended. Um, so, yeah, they couldn't use those boss fights for that. They're basically what-if boss battles. Um, yeah. Otherwise, though, a lot of the... Uh, it is it is a shame that we didn't get at least one or two new boss fights. Would have been nice. Uh, the whole part one story has one boss battle in it, and it is the Shikaku one. And they did rework. They apparently remade that one from the ground up rather than just remastering it like the others. Uh, so it's... I guess it's a little more impressive. At the same time, though, it's clearly much, much slower, much, much easier uh, than the original was. And the original wasn't that hard, so... And they didn't include the cutscenes that accompany it, so that's also kind of a shame. Uh, none of the cutscenes from the original game seem to have transferred over here. A little bit uh, here or there, but very, very little. Uh, the vast majority of the story is told through the slideshows, which, again, I expected to a certain extent. It would have been nice if at least some of these boss battles that were included had the original cutscenes that padded it a little bit, you know? At least a little intro and a little outro kind of deal. Um, it would have been nice if we had gotten one of the finished versions of the part one ending, you know, whether it was the, you know, one of the few cutscenes from the original Storm game, and I trashed the original Storm story mode a lot, but one of the things it did have was cutscenes before and after that fight with Sasuke. Uh, this version definitely is a lot worse than that, but otherwise I'd say the part one story is the best part one we've gotten since the old Ultimate Ninja games. Um, it does include the Land of Waves arc. And uh, even though it's abridged, it still does include the uh, Sasuke Retrieval. It is abridged, like I said, but on the bright side, um, I can kind of understand that. The deal with the Sasuke Retrieval arc is if you did it in thoroughly, it's basically a giant stack of one-on-one -on -one -on -one battles, right? And uh, at least two of which repeat twice, one of which repeats three times, because you have to do it through three different characters, right? Because the 
the, the sound ninja showed up as backup. Lee showed up as backup. So a lot of those battles would be really rep, uh, repetitive. So it is kind of nice to just get a succinct version. They still mention the other battles. Uh, they actually do a pretty good job of covering the whole story here, which is the important thing. The real purpose of history mode is to get people caught up who haven't been keeping up with either the series or the games or whatever. You know, cramming in uh, 70 some odd graphic novel or uh, yeah, graphic novel you know, collection volumes into one single story mode. So, um, and it does a comprehensive job at that. Uh, yes, there is, uh, the slideshows aren't as impressive, but they are better than nothing. And in between, it seems like they did a first run with just the slideshows, and then they came back and said, oh, we should add more info about this, that, and the other thing. Uh, they did find a way to work Indra and Asura into it. I think originally the plan was to do a boss fight with those two. Uh, but for whatever reasons... Uh, they, they didn't get it done, um, which is unfortunate, but at least they did get a, a, th a mention in, and there is even some footage there, uh, some scenes that I might use in my future projects in regards to this series. Now, um, and there's tons of, of smaller events that they added, it seems like in a second run, just to fill out the info, and those are text only, so you read them, uh, there's an encyclopedia, there's, uh, there's all kinds of information there. So it's, it's very accessible for the normies, which is clearly the intention here. Normies and casuals, people who either don't follow the series or haven't touched on it in a long time, this will help them get caught up so that the special story makes sense, uh, and it's a comprehensive, and it's abridged and understandable enough, but abridged that you can get it all done in a few hours, you know? So it's not like you're going to be spending... Again, people have been watching this series for years. It's not going to take you months or years to get caught up. It's going to take you... You know, a few hours, which isn't a big deal. Um, so it's, it serves its purpose for that, which is exactly what it's for. A lot of people thought it was going to be the best of. A lot of people thought it was going to be a giant compilation. And, and granted, I was kind of in there too. Because uh, it is just a big copy-paste job, right? If you're just bringing stuff over that's old. But at the same time, um, from a marketing standpoint, it also makes sense. Because they did just re-release -re those games not too long ago. And they're still uh, very cheap and affordable games out there. The Legacy set... And uh, the trilogy set, very, very cheap. So you can experience this story in thorough from those games uh, by playing them if you so want. And then if you want the abridged version, you've got this. So with any luck, it's going to increase interest in the series. Hopefully there's more. Again, hopefully the Storm series keeps going. It does look like they're setting up for a Baruto Storm game, something along those lines. Uh, here's hoping, but otherwise... Uh, that does seem to be the goal here, is to, is to play catch-up, and again, to help the normies and the casuals, excuse me, get caught up. Uh, as far as the versus mode and general gameplay, the game has actually been pretty extensively reworked. The, the core engine, uh, there's been tons of rebalancing here and there. Um, the characters do have uh, two jutsus now instead of one, which is, uh, they had two jutsus originally, they can only use one at a time. But uh, now it seems the secondary jutsu is what used to be the tilt, because the tilt is gone. But um, the other bright side is when they use ninjas as support, obviously, they still have the two ninjutsu. So this gives you access to technically upwards of six ninjutsu for every battle, which is pretty good. Um, and of course, tons of balance uh, gameplay rebalances. Some characters do have new jutsus. Sometimes it's their tilts. Sometimes it's their old awakening actions. Um, but it's all in there, and, uh, and there are actually a surprising amount of entirely new ones, a lot of things have been rebalanced, it's really a totally new game, competitively speaking, uh, so for people who play online, also I've heard that the, uh, the online data, the play data or whatever is solid, so apparently it's going to be very good connections online, and uh, although currently there's no private invitation option, but supposedly they're going to be offering that uh, very quickly, very soon, apparently on launch, so we'll see, um, I'm not an online player, so it's not a big deal to me, uh, otherwise, we've got a ton of new costumes, only 10 new characters, but, um, more, they've already promised five by the next, uh, forthcoming DLC, uh, they have announced that there's six DLC altogether, I don't know if we're gonna get one character for each, or if that means we're gonna be getting even more characters, anything's possible, uh, we'll see, but this is definitely... I would say shaping up to be a good game on its own. Now, when it comes to prices, I've said before, it is a full-priced game. Um, 
And again, 10 new characters. It is an entirely new for, for online players. This is a, a no brainer to buy at least the, the core version. If you're, if you're online, you probably don't care about the extra costumes and the music, which is fine. You can skip out on the hundred dollar editions, <laughs> right? Um, and the casual players were only interested in the content, probably better off skipping unless you've lost your old games or whatever. Uh, and you want it all under one roof. Um, because it's, it is new content, but if you're not playing competitively, you're not going to really get into what is actually new here. You know, it's only the 10 new characters, and if you don't like the characters, you know, unless you want to wait and see what the DLC offers, uh, you know, it is what it is, and I can't blame anyone for not wanting to pre-order or to get a special edition just for some costumes. Uh, I do think that's severely overpriced, um, even though I, I did it. I'll admit, I did pre-order this, I got, you know, the day before it's released, which is the best I could do. It is, it's expensive for these costumes, but I forked it out because I am a fanboy and I'm a sucker, um, and I'm still looking forward to playing the game regardless. I was going to get it for PC, I was looking forward to using mods for the first time on a Naruto game, uh, because the mods are crazy for these games, uh, they're, they're way out there. Uh, it didn't wind up happening, because what the situation is, is, uh, my schedule got moved around a bit this week, so, uh, the next two days, the next three days, I'm basically in cog I'm at work. Pretty much, I get a break every 16 hours to come home, nap, and go back to work. So, uh, which sucks, and it means, you know, I'm pre-ordering a game that you know is going to install tonight, and I'm not going to be home to play it for four days, you know, and that's if I'm even not in a fucking coma when I finally get out of this this damn work week. So, <laughs> so that's where I'm at. So that's why I changed my mind and I decided to get it. Uh, for the Nintendo Switch, because this game's coming out for all the consoles. Originally, I was going to get a PlayStation 4, because I've already got all the games on there. Um, and then I thought, you know, that's probably not a good idea, because uh, it's a little difficult to record off the PlayStation 4. The thing is, when you're playing Naruto on there and you're recording, uh, the game automatically blocks certain scenes, as CC2 likes to do. So uh, that would disrupt with any streaming, any recording that comes off of it. I would have to take the PlayStation 4 and put it in the office here and hook it up to the computer, the PC with the video card capture, and that would be a lot of work. You know, I mean, the PS3 is already hooked up in here. The Switch is already hooked up in here. So it's easier to go from the Switch, and I can play it at work while I'm stuck there for the next, basically, uh, 56 hours straight or so. And, um, <laughs> and I can actually play it and enjoy it, um, and I'll still be able to stream it, uh, when I get home, uh, or record off it, whatever I want to do with it. So, uh, that's all good news. Um, as far as what I'm going to do with this down the road, I'm still a little up in the air about it, but the general plan is that I'm thinking of a redoing my Naruto series, which is one of my more popular series on this channel. And, um, so the idea is to do pretty much what I've done before, but this time I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it differently, obviously. In the past, uh, the original versions I still have on the channel, uh, they're just, they don't pop up normally. Uh, there's the original ones which I did as a series, and I did it thoroughly, you know, playing through Storm 2, 1, 2, and 3, and capturing as much as I could. Then, uh, you know, Storm 4 came out, so I did like an abridged movie set which replaced that. And, uh, played through the whole series more or less in chronological order, or arranging the footage as such, and, uh, doing, like, an abridged version, not actually playing fully through all three games, so as such, there's technically some stuff missing in that version, but you do get the, the general gist of the story. Um, this game coming out provides new opportunities for that series, uh, to expand on it, and it is likely going to be the last opportunity to do that in respect, because what they've said going forward with this game, is that none of the DLC is going to be Naruto series related. It's all Boruto stuff from here on, which is fine. Uh, and it means that, again, as someone working on a series like this, if I'm planning on adding stuff into chronologically into previous events, I don't have to worry about it because Boruto is going to be all new stuff. That's going to be another project for down the road. For now, I can focus on kind of a, a final edition of my Naruto Storm video game series. So, uh, the plan will be to do a more thorough version, sort of mixing the two. So I'll go back to the, play through all the Storm games, collect the story modes as much as I can, uh, reenact a lot of the fights, 
uh, get a lot of the footage, clean it up, and hopefully get it at a better resolution than the originals are, and kind of have a premium edition, as it were, of the Naruto series. I also want to do a more in-depth uh, timeline series of videos where I'm just going to be focusing on the lore and the history so much of Naruto and building it up and going through the series, which will also have spoilers in it. But um, that's another project that I'll be doing to keep me busy for a while. So that's the plan with these moving forward. I will be using stuff from uh, this game as well. That's the plan. I don't know how good the Switch version is going to look on recording. I doubt it'll be as good as, as far as I know, only the PlayStation 5 version of this game runs at uh, 4K, 60 frames a second. Everything else runs at 30. Um, but I did double check the old Storm games. They run just fine on the Switch at 30 frames. And uh, so it's probably not going to be that much visibly more impressive than the previous titles, but it should still run good, it still, should still look good, so it should still serve. Uh, worst case scenario is I'd have to eventually buy it on PC anyway, which I might do for the mods anyways, but we'll see uh, how that works out as time goes on. Like I said, this is the project I'll be working on for now. Uh, regretfully, I won't be uploading anything, like I said, for at least another four or five more days. <laughs> So anyways, I hope you guys have a good weekend. Maybe I'll catch you online. Otherwise, this is Grim, the Lord of Salt, signing off, saying keep it salty.